Welcome back to the show where we run you through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. After you get through the news you need to know about, we run you through the fan you know, we answer fans, fans' questions. <clears throat> A lot to dive in on today's show. Um, Very, just, obviously a tough week for Dolphins fans, but we'll get into it. Um, this first news story, Colts have not, again, this, this first news, news story, excuse me, comes from Pro Football Rumors. Colts have not engaged in recent Johnson Taylor trade talks, team open to Taylor's practice window. Basically, what the Colts are saying is it looks like he's not leaving at all. And he's definitely not going to be traded this year. Definitely not to the Dolphins, maybe somewhere else. But that trade is dead, especially with the emer- I mean, I don't even have to tell you guys. Devon A. Chain's playing one of the one of the best starts to a Dolphins career of all time. So clearly he's not they're not gonna waste and there would be no reason to, especially with Raheem Mostert, who's playing really good football as well. In the passing game and in the running game, Raheem Mostert's playing good football. So this trade's dead. We will talk about some other trade rumors though, um uh later in the show as the dogs bark. This next news story comes from Pro Football Rivers. Dolphins left tackle Teron Armstead to miss time. <clears throat> um, obviously dealing with a knee injury. Uh, Mike McDaniel said, quote, it's weeks, not days. He's already rolled out against the Giants. He, he was hurt uh, in the game. It's always against Buffalo. I swear to God. Even last year, we dealt with some significant injuries right before we played the Bills. This year, it's Connor Williams, Teron Armstead, and Jalen Phillips. Um, last year, it was obviously two. It was the biggest one, especially in the playoffs. And uh, I don't know what it is about the Bills, but, you know. And, I, and we don't even have to get into the whole rigmarole of Buffalo and <sighs> everything. I've never... It almost like... It was very strange, the reaction to the loss against the Bills. I think it was one of the most overreactive, and it's still going on, um, that I've ever seen in my life. <clears throat> Especially since it's one game. <laughs> it's like we still have to play them again at the end of the year. <laughs> it's just really strange. So that's it for the news. Teron Armstead's heart. Uh, John the Taylor. That's not it for the news, excuse me. We have one more thing to, to talk about. John the Taylor window, that seems to be dead. There are other trade rumors. Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald tweeted, I, um... It was either Barry or Hyde. I could not find the tweet, but he did say there was a report earlier in the week <clears throat> about there's still most likely going to be a trade um, before the deadline. What will that be? Who knows? A lot of people have brought up the fact that Patrick Sertan is a really nice candidate to be traded because of the fact that the Broncos are terrible, and it looks... It looks as though that they're going to restart. That is a cornerstone piece, though. I don't know if... I mean, obviously, that would take a first-round pick. He's 23 years old. He's a first-team All-Pro corner. You usually normally don't trade. I mean, I think the last time we saw that was maybe Champ Bailey from Washington. So, you know, that's... I mean, that actually has happened. There's been some other corners that have been let go in their prime, like uh, Mike Haynes um, from the Raiders. Uh, but that would be a really, I think, a, something to definitely strongly consider at this point, especially with Jalen Ramsey being injured. And I don't know what else they could do because interior linemen are a, a very at a, a premium, obviously, and all the really good players are on teams that are competing to get to the playoffs. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can it definitely has to be someone in the middle of the defense. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But that is the biggest area of concern. The Cater Kohu thing is the least con- is like I would say not as big of a concern because they have Dylan Ramsey on the roster. Eli Apple is still on the roster. They can move Cater from the outside if they wanted to pretty easily. Um and Cam Smith obviously who's on the bench still. Uh, you would think if you were Vic and you wanted to get Cam Smith ready, the Broncos game would have been a good game to do that, similar to what they did with Brandon Jones. But they didn't do that, um, which is unfortunate. So there, there might be a trade out there. 
that they can make. They still have a first round pick this year. Is it worth getting rid of a first round pick to get someone who can come in and contribute? I think so, especially with the way this team looks. It's a really good team, and then they might need just someone to come in. Maybe until Jalen Ramsey gets back, maybe a Sertan move would be good. Or someone else. I don't know who else it would be, though. It's going to be very difficult to find someone at middle linebacker or even on the interior defensive line. So that's pretty much it um, for the news. Now let's get into this game, which I know a lot of people... You know, the reaction to this game is, like, absurd. Some of the stuff that I've seen... Is, it's, 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 I just, it just blows my mind. You would think the season was over yesterday. I mean, to, to imagine being three and one as a football team. This is why Dolphins fans get on my nerves. You're three and one. If you look at historically in the last, we'll say, 35 years, when we've gone up to Orchard Park, even Dan Marino has a losing record against the Bills. Okay. In, on the road, he has a losing record against the Bills. What, like, I don't know what it is. There there are places, this is around the league. It's not just in the AFC East. There are certain places and certain matchups, for whatever reason, give teams trouble. I don't know why. Historically, that's always been a thing. I, it is what it is. I, I wish we could have, you know, broken that this year. We didn't. Is it? Does it suck we played so bad, especially on defense? Yeah, but the, to overreact the way that people are is is insane. <clears throat> and another thing, well, we won't even get into it, but I guess we'll start with the offensive side of the ball because there's less things to be mad about. <clears throat> in terms of <clears throat> the criticisms of what happened in the game, I thought overall the offense looked pretty good, um, especially scoring 14 points on the road to tie the game in that environment. They they really tried their best. I think of for especially with the situation. I mean, they should have scored twenty eight points if it wasn't for the legal man downfield. Um, but the only thing I would say I have a huge issue with. I thought Tua looked good. The interception was already the game was kind of already kind of slipping away, unfortunately. So he I thought he played good football. There were a few times where maybe he. <sighs> Could have controlled the ball over the middle a little bit better. I would say that's probably the only... But that was kind of few and far between. There was like three throws like that. Um, and especially the interception to Kyrie Elam. You kind of have to... I mean, there, there was nobody open. And if you're in that game and you're in that moment, even as a fan, you know it's like we probably can't punt here that we haven't stopped them the entire day. I mean, they scored, what, three touchdowns in, or four touchdowns in a row? Three or four touchdowns in a row to start the game. So that's in the back of Tua's mind. Uh, it's probably in the back of the offense's mind as well. So he was trying to make a play. Obviously, the read wasn't there. It was intercepted. But Tua didn't look. It was Tua was not the reason we lost this game. The really big issue I have <clears throat> is ever since Mike McDaniel got here, God bless him, this is the best offense most Dolphins fans have seen since they've been alive. And it's amazing that they can sit here and whine and cry about it. But uh, the only the, the only um, criticism since he's gotten here is the short yardage call play calling. <clears throat> he overthinks it. And whether it has been a delay of game in the playoffs to go from 4th and 1 to 4th and 6, or even in this game where it's third and one, or excuse me, second and one, you've been running the ball pretty good all day. Uh, Devon Achian has eight carries for 101 yards. You know, there was another short yarder situation where he tried to run on the edges, which if you know football, the Bills play a lot of nickel-based defense. They, they have a weaker box. They have two high deep. Their best box safety isn't even playing in Jordan Poyer. You should be able to get the first down on a yard. I know Connor Williams isn't in the game, but you should still be able to do that. And there were two short yardage situations in big moments that the, that they couldn't convert on. And 
even in, you know, I think, was it, it went from second and one to, I think, did Tua take a sack? We ended up not getting it, obviously, whatever the sequence of events were. Um, but, yeah, it, 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 I just, I don't understand what he, I don't know. <clears throat> and I wasn't in love with running on the edges in this game, um, especially since there was a lighter box in the middle. Uh, that we had a couple of nice, really, really nice runs up the middle in this game, and I really thought that's what Raheem Mostert's job would have been in this game. But you know, he obviously had a bad game. He put the ball on the ground twice. He had seven carries for nine yards, and <clears throat> that I, that is my only real criticism of Mike. Is like, <clears throat> I think you know those those things are just. It seems to be. Um, just to overthink it. And another thing I want to say, and this is something that hopefully moving forward doesn't continue to happen, um, but Jason Sanders, the faith in Jason Sanders to kick a 50-yard field goal, especially with the offense that we have, it's the risk is not worth it. Um, we got to be able, like if it's fourth and four, we're on plus territory, that shouldn't be a field goal. That should be the Dolphins offense. So if you want to kick three there, at this point, I think I have more faith in us converting a fourth down than I do Jason Sanders kicking a 50-yard field goal. <clears throat> but that's really the only issues offensively. I've seen some people talk about how Tyree Kills used too much. I, I don't even understand what the heck that even means. I think he's used adequately enough. Um, I think they do a really good job of spreading the football around in this in in this offense. Like, I think they do a phenomenal job and getting, especially getting Braxton involved in the game plan. <clears throat> what defensively, there there was a lot of issues in this game. Offensively, I have no doubt that this team can score on that defense, um, and they proved it in this game. Uh, if the, let's say that a legal man down, if Lena Lena Mackerberg knows the rules and he follows them right, it's twenty eight points against this defense. You should still in the National Football League. That's a very winnable game. They can easily they can score on them, so that's not a problem. Which brings us to the defensive side of the ball. When looking at this, the running stats from the bill, they had twelve. Car- I mean, you would think they they would have had a lot more than they did. But they didn't. They have, I mean, James Cook averaged two yards a carry in this game. And Latavius Murray averaged eight. But he only had four carries. Um, and those were later in the game. He only had 32 yards rushing, by the way. It, I, when, I, when I saw that, that, was, that sh- it shocked me. One thing I want to point out, and immediately after the game, it bummed me out when I thought about it. What is the reason why we brought Vic Vangio here? Think about this. What were the games that we really hated Josh Boyer the most? Is when we played the Chargers and the Bills and the Niners. Those are the games where Josh Boyer's deficiencies really shined. Those were the games where <clears throat> uh, we needed a good game plan defensively to stop the, the, some of the best players in the AFC. When you look at the scores of the New England game and some of the lower competition games, Josh's did pretty good. It, like, you look at the game against the Jets on at home with a third string quarterback. That was a good game plan. Sorry, guys, I didn't mean to blow up my nose. Um, you cut to this year. We bring Vic Vangio, one of the better defensive coordinators of his time. You would think that would improve. Um, and it didn't so far this year. Against the Chargers, we let up a ton of points. And then against this game uh, on the road in Buffalo, we actually let up more points. And Stephon Diggs had probably the best game of his career against us in this game. Which is very disappointing. Like, very, very disappointing. Because these are the games, These are, and this is, these are the reasons we brought Vic here. I'm Hopefully this gets better. Um, but it just, it's like, where is the creativity of the defense? Where is the game plan specific 
stuff because it seems to me that we run the same dang defense week in and week out. I don't know if he's trying to keep it simple because of the fact that this is the first year in the system. I'm not really sure, but I want to start here. I want to start with the play calling aspect of the defense. We already discussed how it's, you know, annoying enough that this hasn't improved, and you would think with Vic we would have gotten better and at least done a better job against Buffalo. But the other aspect of it is that, especially when you're down on the road and you need to play, like when it was 14-14 or maybe even when even when it was 21-14, you got to stop playing this like soft zone and hope that the offense messes up. Clearly, they're not messing up. Um, but clearly, they're, you know, especially with the crowd, you got to mix it up and get more aggressive in that situation. Um, and it was kind of annoying to watch, not really kind of being content with what we were doing that wasn't working. <clears throat> so you would... I just would have liked to have seen some type of a change. I mean, we're already getting gashed anyway. A lot of people are already making a huge deal out of the fact that Kater Kohu was on digs the entire time with seemingly no help, which was, the I think, the biggest, weirdest thing. You know, the whole Bill Belichick cliche is, okay, we'll double the number one receiver and then we'll leave our best corner on their second best receiver on an island. Seemed like that that was the kind of the thing to do in this game but we didn't double team Stefan Diggs and I don't know if that was because Brandon Jones who had the worst game of his career clearly wasn't ready uh, to go out there he looked awful in the run game he was missing tackles on on pretty much every play and in the pass game he was way a step too slow I mean even on the Gabe Davis the Gabe Davis touchdown that was his responsibility and he couldn't get over there in time the, the play where <clears throat> um, Stephon Diggs breaks all those tackles, goes down the sideline for a touchdown, Brandon Jones has to make that play. If Cater Kohu misses the tackle, fine. But you, as the safety, <laughs> who, are, who isn't even involved in the play as it's happening, have to come up and clean that play up. That's your job. He couldn't even do that. So he looked awful the entire time. You know? And it honestly broke my heart because, you know, I love Brandon Jones. I think he's a great player. But, you know, it raises even more questions. Why wasn't Javon Holland on that side? Why wasn't he shaded over to Dick's side? Um, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. And from from a lot of different, like, for the, and I shouldn't even be talking about the Dean game plan right now. It's Vic Vangio. You know, this was supposed to change. I, it, that's what's so frustrating about it is, like, what the heck happened, man? You know what I mean? At this point, we should we have just like it's like what's the difference between that and Josh Boyer? Now, hopefully, this gets better. I, I I hope it gets better. But defensively, from the game plan and the play calling, uh, weren't I'm fine with it at the beginning of the game. But as the game went on, like it's like we have to try to grab some kind of momentum. <clears throat> and another thing is in defense of Vic Vangio. I think the secondary assignment stuff was like the worst part. Not necessarily, yeah, he should have changed the way coverage-wise and front, front-wise, he should have changed it as the game went on, but they weren't executing it very well. We just talked about Brandon Jones playing terrible. And the middle of the defense is, <clears throat> especially at the middle linebacker position, is an issue. <laughs> like, you know, and especially in coverage, they're too slow to play in this defense. They react too slow. It seems like they're thinking a lot. It's just too slow in the middle. And the Bills really exploited that, especially with their tight ends in the middle of the field. Um, And that has not just been against Buffalo. That has been in every game so far. It seems like, and Jerome Baker is having the worst start to a season that he's ever had. Um, He's thinking way too much. He's. It's not that he's too slow or not athletic enough. It just seems like he's thinking a lot out there, especially in the middle of the defense. And it's not just the middle linebacker position. When we play these two two shell looks that everybody points out every time we play, and Tony Romo pointed out many times in this game, it's very similar to what the Bills do. They play a lot of two shell looks. The difference is 
is the Buffalo Bills front can actually still play good run defense, even with two deep safeties back there. And that has been an issue um, in Miami so far this year. They can't win the line of scrimmage on a consistent basis with two, a two deep look, which isn't going to work if you're going to play that defense. Um, you have to be able to make a play every once in a while up front. And it's disappointing to say this, but Christian Wilkins hasn't been able to do that. Zach Sealer has done it sometimes, um, but not on a consistent enough basis. And Raekwon Davis looked awful in this game. So if you can't provide a negative play while playing this defense, then it just doesn't work. Because you, as a front, as a linebacker, linebacking court, you, you, you're not getting help. There's no single high safety. This, this, Javon Holland isn't coming down to make a play. Okay, You have to disrupt the game by yourself, and that is has been an issue so far this year. Um, between the middle of the field being, especially in coverage, a, a, a problem because these dang linebackers can't do their job, and they're too dang slow. And then the, the interior defensive line is having a lot of issues, and it shouldn't have issues. You would think Christian Wilkins and Sealer, I don't know what it is. Like, I honestly don't know what it is, but especially Christian, um, to, to, to see that from him. I mean, it was just such a poor performance by so many good players on the defensive side, other than Van Ginkle, who's been the best defensive player on the team so far this year. It was very disappointing <clears throat> to see a lot of those players play as bad as they did. Him and Javon Holland um, are the only ones that I could say they didn't. And even Xavier Howard at times was frustrating me, you know, uh, with some of the stuff that he was doing <clears throat> with uh, Gabe Davis. So, I mean, it was just a very poor performance from the middle of this defense um, from players that I expect more of from. Uh, even Brandon Jones, he did get a lot of playing time last week in Denver. Buffalo's a different animal, obviously. But to play that bad is very disappointing. And uh, I'm, I'm very disappointed in this defense. From Vic Vangio all the way down to some of the better play, And it's not just Vic's fault because the defense works. It, it really does work. But it do either the personnel doesn't match the scheme, which is an unfortunate thing to say. Um, I hope that's not the case. I hope that, especially the interior, I, 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 they should be able to adapt to this defense. But the, I think the middle linebacker position and the fit, I hope that they can kind of bring that along a little bit quicker. Or maybe they have to go out and find somebody who can be able to plug and play in this system and react faster. Because it's just too slow in the middle of the defense right now. In the run game and in the pass game. I mean, David Long who's made some plays this year has been very disappointing um uh, and especially in run defense because like that's the best thing that he did coming from tennessee he hasn't really done anything so the middle of that defense has just played awful all season <clears throat> and the pass rush is suffering from it they i mean the the bills bait i mean when they were in third and long we actually did rush the passer at a pretty decent clip but they just were—they were never in, in negative situations the entire time, and like, and the, the entire point of this defense is the offense. We're gonna—we're gonna hit you in the backfield. We're gonna hit you for a no gain, and then it's really gonna be hard for you to convert against the stuff that we do on the back end, and they haven't been able to do that f almost the entire season. Like it, it's really, really unfortunate and everybody's quick passing game against us and run game um in some games this year has been way too good and that keeps him out of third and long and that has to be better <clears throat> this game in spe specifically i think what vic is calling and what vic is trying to do should work but the players aren't doing it the right way i think he definitely should have changed it up <clears throat> and in this game um to help them out uh, because it wasn't working and he should have like okay clearly we can't do what we wanted to do today we got us we got to switch it up that never happened <laughs> like even at halftime that didn't happen so that ha that can't happen again um but 
even with the whole Kato Kohu thing, that was ridiculous. But they have to execute this, this stuff. I mean, this was like an all-time bad performance from a lot of players on this team uh, defensively. So I know that they can play better. I hope the middle, especially the middle linebacker position, I hope that can get better. That's the only thing that is concerning me is like they've, they've played really bad. That has to be better. Um, disappointing. Very disappointing defensive performance. Uh, very disappointing. Um, I wish I was there to yell at him. I was thinking that the entire time. I'm like, bro, does someone have to get in the hot? I mean, you know how embarrassing that was? I-, I can't imagine, like, this is a game, this is on the road against Buffalo. This is a team that, <clears throat> this is the team we have to beat to go to where we want to be. And to play like that defensively was really sad. Um, would, have J- would Jalen Ramsey have fixed the issues in this game? To a certain extent. He would have. But defensively, if this team wants to be the defense that they want to be, they have to create more chaos and two deep looks on their front seven. And if they can't do that, then they're going to have to figure out a completely different way of playing defense. And that maybe that's what Vic has to do. He Maybe he has to go back to the drawing board unless they make a trade that... Because it doesn't... It's like, how are they going to get any better if it just doesn't... It, they're not creating negative plays. They're not playing fast. I don't know how that gets better, unless they either change stuff schematically, or they go get someone else to do it. But one thing I knew for sure has to be better is the interior defensive linemen have to play better. They have the talent to do it. They, there's no reason for them not to play better, especially after th- this, this last week. Um, I could talk about that all. It was a it was like a very it was a disgustingly bad performance by them. Um, and they should be ashamed of themselves going back to Miami playing like that. I mean, Zach Sealer just got paid. Christian Wilkins wants a contract extension, and you go out there and play like that. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, and you, and you all wonder why Bradley Chubb and, you know, hasn't, and, and some of the pass rushing numbers aren't better than they are. It's because of them. We have to get people in more third and long situation we have to make plays on first and second down we're just not doing that right now we're not hitting anybody behind the line of scrimmage on first and second down right now we're not even for no gain and when teams spread it out and pass the football our linebackers are exposed so that that has to be better i don't know how maybe they have to play brandon jones at middle linebacker something like that maybe they moved holland down to linebacker as like a nickel back it's the only thing i can really think of for them to kind of try to fix it, but the offense is not a, is not an issue. Um, they actually have a run game this year. When Connor Williams comes back, um, even if he doesn't come back this week, I think Eichenberg did an okay job. I mean, there were obviously probably like there were definitely issues with it. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it wasn't like oh my god. Like I mean, this is one of the if this is honestly at, in terms of front sevens, this defense is played. To, other than probably Philadelphia, that's probably, in terms of performance, the top two front sevens in the NFL right now. So, you know, of course he's going to, he's a backup center, but I just hope the defense gets better because it's a hard watch, man. It was hard to watch him this week from, or this this last game from an effort, from a, just, just awful, awful, just not, they played awful, dude. And it was hard to watch that. I mean... And they never, again, you can't do that on the road. You can't let a team score three touchdowns in a row on the road. You have to be able to grab the momentum defensively. And I hope we can kind of get back to, let's make some plays defensively because we haven't really seen that all year this year, and it's it's very frustrating. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think. I don't, I'm not concerned about this team. It's still a really good football team. There are definitely issues on the defensive side of the football that have to be addressed, but I think this team is going to be really good still for the rest of the season. And that, if, if I was a Dolphin in that locker room and I was looking at the way that we play defensively, I'm like, we can beat the, we definitely can beat them. <clears throat> There's no doubt in my mind, especially in Miami. I didn't look at this game like a lot of other people are looking like, oh, there's a clear difference. I would tell you guys if there was. And I've said that in the years past when we've played Buffalo. I've said that. 
that we can't handle some of the stuff that they do. But I definitely think we can. We just have to tweak some things here and there. And honestly, um, I think we can beat them. Um, and I do think we can be the best team in this division. I don't think it's... That's what makes it so disgusting. It's like we shouldn't have lost by four touchdowns um, or t- by 28 points in a game like this. And I think you could see that even on Mike McDaniel's demeanor after the game. It's like that was just really disappointing because this team can play better than that. <clears throat> and they played Buffalo really well last year. And uh, this team's better than it was a year ago. And it's unfortunate to, to, to see that. Um, but they're, they're still really good. And I can't wait to play the Bills again. I love what Tua said after the game. We'll see him again. And I can't wait, you know, that game's going to be amazing. And I can't wait to, especially since it's at the end of the year, we should have Dalen Ramsey back. Hopefully the stuff defensively has been figured out. <clears throat> and I'm interested to see what we do against the Giants this week. <clears throat> I hope somebody gets after him in the defensive room. Uh, But that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.